This is the Potenzic Atom and the Potenzic Atom SC. These are 250 gram drones. They're actually rather popular right now and they're actually really solid. In today's video, I want to see how good they are for doing photogrammetry or making 3D models. The Potenzic Atom itself comes with a 3 axis gimbal, which allows for stabilization as well as this 250 gram or below 250 gram body. Also, you get three batteries if you buy the package, and each of those batteries gets you about 30 minutes. So overall, it's a really nice introductory drone, especially if you can get it on eBay for about 250 bucks for the whole kit. Definitely would highly recommend if you're looking to get into it, but I'd be curious to see how good the models that come out of this are. Now less appealing is the Potenzic Atom SC, which has a somewhat stabilized gimbal. It uses electronic image stabilization, and this whole body here doesn't actually stabilize too much. Now the camera itself will kind of tilt up. It is based off of a servo motor, so it is not as smooth as you would get with maybe a four axis brushless gimbal motor. So also I have a concern with this drone specifically, and that is that the camera and this gimbal assembly is gonna be very problematic for photogrammetry. So the idea of creating 3D models is all based off of taking multiple pictures and putting them together and determining the differences and what's the same. And especially if the drone's gonna be flying in air and it's wobbling and it, it really, drones do wobble quite a bit. They have to course correct. And if you ever fly like an FPV drone, you know just how like much work this actually is to constantly make sure it's steady. So in order for the drone to stay steady, there's a lot of movement here. Now for pictures, this is okay. Um, I have found that this drone specifically will often, especially like when you're windy conditions, the photos will come out really crooked. And my theory is, is once you rotate around a certain spot, the wind's going to be blowing one way and then the wind's going to be blowing, you know, the other way. And I feel like it's going to prevent a lot of the overlap you normally would get with a stabilized three axis gimbal, because while this is great for certain situations, especially if you're in a low wind situation, I think this is fine. I find that 90% of the time that I fly this drone, the wind is too high for the inbuilt image stabilization to work. And therefore you end up in a situation where the photos do come out looking like something's wrong with the gimbal and it really doesn't look professional. Now for model creation, my assumption is that's going to be the issue is that it's not going to look as good. And I have a feeling that it's also going to, you know, again, create some issues with the model. So that's just my preliminary guess based off of kind of the assembly and the hardware on this drone. In this video, we're going to be trying both of these out. We're going to be comparing them, seeing which one's better and what the results look like. Now keep in mind also that both these drones do not have GPS metadata attached to the pictures, which means that the models that come out of this are not geo-referenced to anything. There is no actual measurements that you can pull out of this because it is based off of purely image and no measurements. As where something like a Mini 4 AK or a Mini 4 Pro will have that reference and then you can use that for taking measurements. These don't have that. So if you're looking to get into model creation, you might want to decide to upgrade your drone and pick something different. So with that being said, let's hop into it. Let's see what these models look like. Let's do some flying and figure out what we're going to do. Another important thing I feel like we should bring up is the fact that the Potenzic Atom itself does have the option to have waypoints. So if you want to do like a repeated path, maybe over a certain location, and you're trying to see maybe the progress of like a construction operation going on, you can basically set a pre-planned flight. Now, however, there isn't a lot of automation with this. You can't select an area and have it like automatically fly an area that you've never flown before without having to like manually go in the app. Um, the benefits to this is, of course, it's, this drone is, of course, cheaper, but on the other hand, there are some nicer drones, like namely the DJI Mini 4 Pro, the Air 3, and the Mavic 3, that allow you to do, like, automated missions if you use a tool called Waypoint Map, and I think that is obviously a much higher budget, so I think the Potenzic Atom itself does fit nicely here if you take all those things considered. However, I, again, feel like the higher-end drone models would be better. Now, with the GPS and then gyro data built in, it will mean that the models themselves will come out a lot higher quality than you will get on the Potenzic, I feel. So, let's prove this out. Let's actually take some models. Let's see what the final results are. So now that we're actually flying the drone, let me talk a little bit more about my experience doing this. So this is strictly going to apply to the Potenzic Atom SC, the one with the mechanical gimbal and not the four, three axis stabilized gimbal. 
And I've noticed, especially when trying to fly this, that it is very difficult to A, make sure that you keep consistent distance and overlap between you and the subject. So for example, making sure that I'm staying at the exact same distance as I rotate around this building here. But also, it's very difficult to fly in a way that the drone does not like wobble a whole bunch and ruin the images. And I've noticed especially how quickly the winds can change and then you get in a situation where the first picture may only have like 50% overlap than the second one just because of how much the drone has shifted based off the winds and also just the speed that it's moving. Because if you fly too quickly somewhere or fly too quickly sideways and then you all of a sudden pull up on the controls, the drone's of course going to try to correct for that and it's going to be pretty difficult. It's just very difficult to fly this in a way that the video is smooth and I feel like it's great for beginners but it's certainly not going to cut it when it actually comes to trying to fly this at least for me in a long consistent manner so first up we have the potenzic atom which is what's generated here and then we also have the potenzic se which is what's generated here so the first thing that you'll notice is that this potenzic se really had a lot of issues um, specifically when i was flying it i noticed there was a lot of issues um, i really noticed that the especially with the camera not being stabilized it really struggled to get consistent pictures so what happened what would happen is there would be a gust of wind the picture would be very crooked then the next picture would be very straight so it would be very difficult to get consistent overlap and i think that's a big issue specifically in what we encountered at least testing this versus the potenzic uh, regular drone on the atom this at least looks I want to say somewhat decent um, I want to say this is somewhat accept acceptable maybe other than the fact that it just didn't generate a lot out a lot of points it looks like um, and I would probably attribute to that to not having a lot of geo data also keep in mind the measurements on this stuff are completely irrelevant I think that might also be another issue is that if you look at it it doesn't actually care to generate out points so for example this is what I mean by the importance of um, actually having like geo data on this is this is the Potenzic Atom. Um, we take a look at the, I think this is the Mini 4K, the new drone that they just released, and we measure, let's see, make sure I measure the exact same thing. I'm gonna measure the exact same thing. This is going to just show the importance of having some type of geo data when it comes to, so this is 40 meters versus having only, I think I think that's, I, I, can't, I can't even tell too much, maybe that's, but that's like says this is a meter. So this doesn't really provide you any data when you go through and make the measurements. So if you're using this photogrammic data for something, you're really gonna want those measurements. Um, and preferably if you really need the measurements and you need the accuracy, you get an RTK module, like the AnyDrone RTK that I'm making. But that's what the importance of measurements is for. So this is really not that useful. And I would assume this probably generated slightly larger, but this is just, pinning it to a random value to be honest actually interesting how that one generated roughly the right size i'd be curious to know why that is because uh, i do know that it doesn't have any geo data as well so it's just interesting that that shows that, that doesn't have any data attached to it the mini 4k mini 4 pro sorry has the roughly the same measurements too so i mean you just do this and this is roughly the same measurements as well so Realistically, it's about the same, you know, differing amounts. So I just would be curious to know, obviously, this is not that great. Also, if you notice, the whole thing is crooked. So if you wanted to actually go through and use this model, that's a crooked model and it's not actually flat. Because if, again, if you look at the scale of the, this is the Mini 4, this is the Mini 4 actually, uh, Mini 4 Pro, it's very flat, baseball field is flat versus this which is off and then this which I would argue is just completely unusable mainly due to the overlap in the pictures and just not being flat or horizontal because of the lack of a gimbal. So I would say the final result on the Potenzic is it would be great if you're just fooling around, if you want to try this out, maybe you want to make a 3D model etc. But I don't think this is usable in any like it even has some issues over here with repeated pictures and stuff or repeated um, elements so i would say great if you're trying this out you're learning but the moment you start doing anything where accuracy is even remotely needed um, you're going to want to probably get some type of drone with geodata so 
yeah, again, I think that really covers it. So I'm going to include all the models that you've seen so far in today's video down in the description. You can view them, measure them, check them out using the exact same interface I have down here. If you want to make models with your drone, you can. Um, you just go to aerialmodel.com, software I wrote. Um, basically, you just go through, load in your pictures, and pretty much with any drone, and you can get kind of these same results. Uh, it's 25 pictures is for free, and I think 100 images uh, allows you to make like an overhead map is the max for free as well. So, um, yeah, feel free to check that out. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, goodbye.